Good morning. It's March the 10th. It's another beautiful day. I hope you'll have time to go outside and just sit, walk around, and enjoy it this afternoon. Today we're going to continue with the second temptation of Jesus. Uh, yesterday we looked at what the devil said to him uh, about how God was going to protect him. And Jesus responds with scripture as well and says, it's written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Which uh, comes from Exodus, from chapter 17. I think it's verse 7. It's at the end of that passage, right after the manna story. Remember the manna story? And right after that story, <clears throat> the people begin to complain again. Moses, you brought us out here in the desert and there's nothing to eat. Well, God provided them with food. Yeah, but there's nothing we can drink, Moses. We're going to die of thirst. Did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Moses gets a little exasperated and says to God, okay, how, what, what are these people going to drink? And God says to Moses, you know, go to a certain place or a certain rock and take your staff and hit that rock. And when he does, fresh, cool water bursts out of the rock. It's a kind of a spring that happens. And so the people can drink as much as they, they need. And, um, and that's called Massa in Hebrew. And it means like the place of temptation or testing. And so the point is... Uh, the people are told, do not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at that place um, way back then, that place of testing at Massah. So don't do that to God. Trust in God. Uh, tell God what you need, but don't start complaining and griping because, you know, God doesn't have time for this. Um it reminds me a little bit of, of a friend of mine who um, used to, uh, he, he's quite the liturgical scholar, and he used to complain when people said, well, if we have communion by intention and share a common cup, we'll all get each other's diseases and we'll all get the flu. And he used to say, uh, no one's ever gotten sick in the history of the church from sharing the cup. I don't know how you could test that or prove that, um, and I suspect that using wine, it might be true. Um, but his, his point was, you, you don't get sick from, from something like that. Um, and those who are complaining about that are just looking for reasons not to make a, make a change. It's a little bit also like those... God will protect my congregation from COVID, and so... Let's have church. And then, they, you know, hundreds of people would get sick and, you know, all of that. Um, God might protect us from something, but God also might say, don't be a fool. You know, God doesn't really want us to jump off the roof hoping that he'll catch us. Because once you've jumped, you're committed. Um, and uh, you don't want to hit the ground, you know. So don't tempt God. Because God might not be there if you act like that. Um, and I suspect that in our ordinary lives, a lot of the times, we do things assuming that God will take care of us, when if we really stopped and thought about it, we wouldn't do those things, or we'd behave differently or, or um, more maturely. So think about that today, and, and what is it that we could do or not do that would... Um, would heed Jesus' word and not testing the Lord our God.